The Savior's love. Oh, my Savior's love. All right, Brother Lonnie's going to be playing a hymn called My Savior's Love. My Savior's Love. God bless you, Brother Lonnie. <laughs> a familiar scripture that I have preached from before. Uh, the Lord just laid it on my heart to do it, so I just said, well, okay, I'll do it. And I'm going to be looking at uh, Acts chapter 1 and going uh, to verse 8 here in just a moment. But before I begin the message today, I really do want to thank all of the members of Messiah Baptist Church. I want to thank you for your faithful, financial, and prayerful support of the ministries here at Messiah Baptist Church. All those missionaries, all those letters you see on the wall up there are part of our outreach uh, here at Messiah Baptist Church. And uh, some people say, well, preacher, I really don't have very much. I, I really can't do much. And I'm always reminded of that thing I learned a long time ago. Little is much when God is in it. <clears throat> Without your help, Without your faithful help, we could not get the gospel out around the world like we do. Also, I want to take time to thank those people who watch us each week by YouTube. We have a certain amount of people who every week tune in us uh, by way of YouTube. In fact, um, when the microphone went down, I had a couple of them that called me and texted me and said, we can't hear it very good, Brother King. I said, well, that's because our microphone got a little wet, I think, or something happened to it. Anyway, uh, I forgot to take it off my shirt. And anyway, but Jody uh, got us a new one this week. But we like to thank those people who watch us regularly by way of YouTube. And of course, you can get us on, on YouTube by simply saying to your phone, YouTube Messiah Baptist Church Richland Hills. That's all you got to do, okay? Push Google, YouTube, Messiah Baptist Church, Richland Hills, and we will come up. Uh, the ministry, the service that we're doing right now. 
Uh, I appreciate those who listen to us regularly, and I know that some are praying for us out there in a world where we will never see or reach them. But I learned a long time ago, guys. I learned this a long time ago. Where there's no investment, there is no interest. Did y'all learn that? So I want to thank all of you. I want to thank the members who are here regularly, and I want to thank those who listen by way of YouTube. I got to take a moment here. Two years ago, this month, as some of you know, COVID-19 was at its height, just beginning, and everyone really was kind of afraid, didn't know what to do, right? Really didn't know what the government was saying this, government was saying that. We didn't know what exactly to do or what to expect. And uh, we continued as a church to try to have services until one day the uh, authorities said, Brother King, you can't do that. Or, you know, COVID is this and COVID is that. And uh, it was kind of hard pill for me to swallow. You all know that. Uh, in fact, I said, listen, uh, we have a First Amendment right uh, of a free speech and our right to assembly. And uh, that's a choice that we make as a church. However, I did comply uh, to what they said to do for two or three weeks. I did do that. You all know that. Uh, they limited the amount of people who could be here. And, you know, it, it has been a chore for us to get it back, you know, to norm. Uh, but I said to myself when I was thinking about it, I was saying, you know, COVID-19, I think that was, I really do think that was something, a trick of Satan. Uh, he had put a lot of fear in uh, the world with that, and he put a lot of fear in even in God's people, and really a lot of people uh, stayed away, and uh, of course that was their choice. Uh, but this is the way I looked at it. I said, well, they can't come to us, but we can go to them. Amen. And so we started the YouTube ministry. And this is what I said. What Satan meant for evil, God meant for good. Amen. And God has developed a ministry right here uh, from us uh, being able to be on the YouTube. I, I would never have done it had it not uh, uh, that occurred. But because it did, my daughter Jody and Brandon suggested that we do it, and they, they did it, they developed it, and I'm very thankful, and we as a church family should be very grateful and thankful for that. From generation, from generation to generation, we leave a heritage. We leave a heritage. The generation before me left me my heritage to which I know some of it was good and some of it was not so good. But I learned from both. I'm not full of complaints. I'm not complaining about it. I'm just telling you, sometimes you learn good things and sometimes you learn things not so good. Um, it is up to each generation. Now is our time. Now is our time. It is up to each generation what they want to pass on to their children and to their grandchildren. And I remember that one thing my parents uh, passed on to me was how important the church was to our life. The church is mighty important to us. I'll tell you that. It's mighty important to Jesus, too, because he actually gave his life for the church. At the church, we saw people saved. And boy, I like to see people still get saved, don't you? Does that not thrill your soul to see somebody get saved? And it was at the church, and by way of the church, that we saw people get baptized. Uh, and that's a, a, a blessing to us who are already believers. Uh, by the way, you can get saved anywhere. You know that. But it is by way of the church and the preaching of the message of the church, it, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You're here today not to hear my uh, um, thoughts about all the political things going on in the world. You're here today to listen to the Word of God. People are healed. People are prayed for. 
right here at the church. I would say every one of you have been prayed for some time or another here at Messiah Baptist Church. The church was a place that was supposed to be respected. To my parents, they passed this on to me. While we know um, this is just a building, we know that. But to my parents, the church was like a holy place. It was kind of like a holy place. It was the place where we would go and worship God. Amen. So I want to talk to us today about our heritage and what we're going to leave to the next generation. Yes. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. I've got several verses that we will read throughout or quote throughout the message, but this is just where I wanted to start. It says, but ye shall receive power, you, the church, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Today I want to speak to us on the subject of the church and the importance of it. We are now finishing our 36th year of starting Messiah Baptist Church. Um, the church is called the Bride of Christ. He loves her. He gave himself for her. Um, <clears throat> and it's my opinion that each of us have received a special blessing through our church, our church family. Amen. I also believe that our community and the surrounding community is blessed because 36 years ago, we started a church. When there was no church, there became a church. And as a result of this church, even the world, by way of our missionaries, are blessed. Isn't that an amazing thing? Hallelujah. That the world abroad is blessed because missionaries we support are out there preaching the gospel, even as I am preaching to you today. And Jesus said concerning the church, the very gates of hell shall not prevail against her. So COVID-19 and all other things do not stand a chance against the church. The church was started and founded and established on Christ, who is the solid rock. He is the rock upon which we build our lives, and He is the rock upon which we are striving to build this church. Peter said, when Jesus asked him, Jesus said, Peter, who do you say that I am? Peter answered him and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And I will tell you, no one can be a legitimate member of the church of Jesus Christ without making a profession of faith in that Christ. Amen. And no one can do it for you. Right. Not mom, not dad, not grandma, grandpa. You know, I know I hear people, and, and I think it's a wonderful thing to hear people talk about how much faith their grandmother had or their mother has and so on. It's a wonderful thing. But no one can believe for you. That is something you must do. Paul said, For with the heart man believes unto uh, righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. To the church, to God's people, Isaiah writes these words in Isaiah 54 and verse 17. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. This is the heritage of of the servants of the Lord. And I want to remind you, you are much stronger than you think you are. 
You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. David said that he is our refuge and he is our strength in the time of need and trouble. There was a teacher in the New Testament, a teacher in the New Testament. His name was Gamaliel. And he said this, when they had put the disciples in prison for preaching the gospel. And we may not be too far from that these days, by the way. Better be strong and full of courage because perhaps those days are coming. But after Rome had put the disciples in prison for preaching the gospel, Gamaliel said, If this message be of men, it'll come to nothing. But if it be of God, we cannot stop it. Because if we attempt to, it will be as though we are fighting against God himself. Now, for over 2,000 years, the world and Satan have been fighting a losing battle. The church will be triumphant. Gamaliel was a religious man. And he was smart enough to leave the church alone. Like David said, touch not mine anointed. For no weapon formed against her or you shall prosper. When I became a Christian, it seemed like it was just a wonderful event. And apps, it was 56 years ago. I was 17. You guys can, you all, did y'all pass? Did y'all go to Richland High? <laughs> or Haltham High? But uh, it was 56 years ago when I put my faith and trust in the Lord. I was a 17-year-old boy right out of school. But I remember when I got saved, how wonderful the event was. It was a wonderful thing for me. It made me happy. I was rejoicing. Um, I was crying tears of joy. But it was like as though my cup was running over that evening that I got saved. But it didn't take very long until I realized I was in a battle and I better, be, better get ready. Paul said that he had fought a good fight, uh, that he had run the race, and that uh, he was ready to be offered. No weapon formed against the church or its message will uh, uh, succeed. And Paul said and warned that when you come against the church or God's people, it is like kicking the thorns or pricks. That means that you're only going to hurt yourself. To oppose the church is not wise, for God himself will defend her like you men would defend your wife with even your life. The church, from the early days of her existence, when Nero burned Rome and blamed the Christians, and by the thousands they were crucified, Nero's attempt to stamp out the new religion only caused the people to scatter throughout the world. And when they scattered, they took the message of the gospel everywhere. During the dark days of the, what is called the Catholic Inquisition, the murder of good men and women and their families for their faith in Christ caused men like Martin Luther, John Calvin and William Tyndale to rise up and bring about what is now called the Great Reformation. In the year 1517, Martin Luther left the Catholic priesthood and began preaching what is called justification by faith. As found in Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9, where it says, For by grace are ye saved 
through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Teaching us that every man is a priest unto God themselves. In other words, you don't have to go through a priest. The only priest that we go to is the high priest, the eternal high priest, which is Jesus Christ himself. We go to him. We confess whatever we need to confess to him. We talk to him. And we gladly bow to him and him alone. Every man and woman and boy and girl has a right to boldly come to the very throne room of God. And my friend, he holds out the golden scepter and welcomes you into his presence. William Tyndale, who translated the Bible into the common man's language, was hated so much that after 100 years, after they had martyred him, they dug up his body and burned it. Good Christian men and women have suffered for the cause of Christ and their faith in him through all the centuries, through these 2,000 years of the church. For over 2,000 years, the church has faced unparalleled atrocities. And I will tell you that there's no people group anywhere that has suffered more than the Christian church. And even today, we think all those things could never happen today. We're modern people. Those things could never happen. But I'm here to tell you that throughout the Middle East and around the world, Christians are still suffering for persecution. The Apostle Paul admonished the church at Ephesus to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil and all that which is evil. The church, listen to this. The I know the world on its own as it stands probably has no idea of the importance of the church. But I'm he here to tell you the church is mighty important. The church is important to each of us. When our government said the church, they, they passed it law and said it wasn't essential. Man, they didn't know what they were talking about. The church is an essential part of our life. The church teaches us to oppose tyranny whenever we see it. My dear friends, I will remind all of us that we are in a real battle. Good versus evil. Our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against pow uh, powers, against the uh, rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. And I said, now where could some of those high places be? I think it could be perhaps in the government. You think it's possible? Is it possible? Some of the sp spiritual wickedness is in high places. Could it be? Do you think that some of the spiritual wickedness could be maybe in Hollywood where they make millions and millions of dollars and they can do whatever they want to do? And I've got to tell you as parents and grandparents, be careful about what you let your kids go to the movies to see. There's not much worth watching, but be a little bit more cautious about it. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Do you think that some of the wickedness might also be in, in religious circles? Do you think it's possible? Do you think there are some religions that are teaching things that are not true? Is it possible? I would admonish you to be careful even about that. Uh, remember, God has said to us that he did not give us the spirit of fear, but he's given us the spirit of love and of power and of a sound mind. That means he's given to you good judgment and common sense. So pass on 
to your children, the joy of the Lord being your strength. Pass on to the next generation that God is your refuge and strength and a very present help in the time of need. Pass on to your children and your grandchildren the importance and power of prayer. Pass on to your children the importance of the Word of God. Open it in your home. Leave it where it's easily accessible. Pass on to your children that every good and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights, in whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God is good part of the time. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan to get thee behind. Victory today is mine. God is our refuge. God is our strength. He is our help in the time of need. And my friend, if you have been looking to Washington, D.C. for your help, you are looking in the wrong place. God is your defender. God is your protector. God is your provider. In fact, he said, I will provide all your needs according to my riches in glory. Paul wrote these words in 1 Timothy 1 and verse 17. Now unto the king, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. We have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, more valuable than silver or gold. And in my lifetime, I've had a little silver and I've had a little gold. But I would gladly give it up to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. You have been adopted into the family of God, for God is now your Father. He loves you with an everlasting love. And He said He promised you that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And I say to you, just ask Pharaoh and his chariots. They cannot defeat the people of God. Darius threw Daniel in the lion's den. Thought that'd be the end of him. And he went down the next morning and he yelled down there, he said, Daniel, is your God able to deliver you? Yes, O king, my God is able to deliver me. My dear friends, you and I have an opportunity before us to shout all over the metroplex and around the world through our mission endeavor that God is able to deliver you. What a wonderful heritage. I hope we'll pass it on. Over these last 2,000 years, millions of Christians have died in the faith and for their faith. They kept their faith even in death. And as they approached heaven, they heard Jesus say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Oh, how beautiful will those words sound. The Apostle Paul was cut in half by Caesar's orders. I heard this a long time ago. They say that mothers still call their sons Paul. Well, men call their dogs Caesar. Peter was crucified upside down because he did not feel worthy to die in the same manner as Christ. Andrew, Andrew was crucified in Russia. You see, when persecution came, the disciples scattered throughout the world and Andrew took the gospel to Russia and there he was killed by the soldiers as he preached the gospel to the people. Thomas went to India preaching the gospel and establishing a church. The soldiers stood him up and used him for target practice for preaching the gospel. 
James was stoned to death in Syria simply for preaching the gospel to the people. Only John lived out his life even though he himself had been boiled in oil. And so you might tend to think that fear would grip the Christian church. But the Apostle Paul said it this way, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in you. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and a sound mind. Joshua said for us to be strong and have a good courage. And so, my friend, we have been encouraged, we have been encouraged to fight the good fight of faith. And like the old Christian song says, stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. The United States military is taught, those of you who are veterans, you know this to be true, are taught never to leave their soldiers who were killed on the battlefield on the battlefield. My dear friends, someday the trumpet will sound. And Jesus will come for all the Christian soldiers. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet our Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with him. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? No weapon formed against you or the church shall prosper. I'm glad to be a member of the church. I'm thankful and humbled, or whatever I'm supposed to say, I'm very glad to be a part of Messiah Baptist Church. My admonition to you is from the Apostle Paul, who said to us, and I know it happens, but he gave us this admonition, let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. One more verse and I'll close. Isaiah 55, 6. Isaiah 55 and verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Sometimes the Lord speaks to our heart. He speaks to our heart. He didn't speak some way out of the sky. He could, I suppose, but I know he talks to our heart. Perhaps he's speaking to our heart today. If you're not a Christian, I know he's saying to you, come, come. Trust me, believe in me, have faith in me. If you're looking for a church home, we invite you to come and be, be with us in our efforts to build this church for God's glory. Be with us, and we'll try to go another 36 years. <laughs> stand up, stand up for Jesus. Brother Lonnie, would you come? And let's sing that verse, uh, that song. I think it's number 481 in your hymnal, if you would. I think I've got the right one, Brother Lonnie. Stand up. What a heritage, my friend. What a heritage we've been given. Hmm. Stand with